it's uh, 13 less seconds to drop the drivers onto a computer, which means technicians not standing around as much. Fair warning before I begin, this coffee may get a lot of time on camera because I have a bit of a dry throat. So let's begin. What you're looking at <clears throat> is the commit log for my TriTech Utilities. Basically, it's a package of mostly shell scripts and a few little C helper programs that I've written that do all kinds of stuff for my computer repair business, diagnostic and repair work. I do most of this stuff inside of a Linux-based system that I've created called the TriTech Service System, which is downloadable at jodybruchon.com under the software section. Uh, that version that's available is quite old and probably does not work with newer technologies like NVMe and uh, some of the Intel uh, Optane and the weird memory controllers that are coming out now. But it'll work for anything basically 2017 and older, pretty much for sure. Anyway, <clears throat> what you're looking at is the Git log. And I, as you can see back in October of 2020, about five or six months ago at this point, um, there is TT driver drop, major PCI HD audio speed improvements. And I want to show you this because you probably read the title of the video about how I try to avoid subshells. Well, most of the stuff that does the heavy lifting in my service system, in my private script collection here, is scripts. It's um, not it's not Python, it's not Perl, it's good old-fashioned shell scripts, and the most extravagant that I'm willing to get with those is Bash. Bash is there, Bash does what I need. If Bash doesn't do what I need, I can call a program that does. So I stick to shell scripts to keep my embedded system as small as possible. Uh, most of the stuff's busy box, but some of it's bigger, fatter programs, and Bash is the fat shell script interpreter. Now, I'm going to show you how I used Bash and Bash features to make driver drop quicker. So I've already gone through... Um, I tried to make this video before, and I didn't do a very good job, so... Uh, I'm going to redo it now, and I'm going to show you the diff for this commit. If you look up here at this commit, I'm going to show you what changed to make this speed improvement. And you might be a little surprised when you see the speed improvement. Now, let's read this real fast. Um, TT driver drop. This change reduced a drop. I could have worded that better. Reduced a driver drop from 34 seconds to 21 seconds and added a benchmark option. Um, what we're going to do with this is, how do we get 34 to 21 seconds? Well, what, what I actually, while I'm thinking about this, what kind of performance boost is that? That's uh, part, let's see, 34 minus 21 is 13 seconds. 13, 38%. Uh, so 38% of the time was shaved off by this. And here's the magic sauce. You don't need the whole program. What you need to know is this runs in a tight loop. I can actually show you a little later. But this code runs in, in a loop that scans. It receives lines, and it has to scan those lines. So what, what's going on here is we have... I, I, I keep forgetting you can't see my finger. We have vendor, device, subsystem tags, and then there's a little bit of manipulation to get things the way I need them to be. Um, TF is a temporary file, and DBF anything is also a temporary file. It's a database file. This program caches the database locally since it's often stored over a network, so it can do the heavy grepping in a tempfs. So here's what we got. Vendor, the old version says uh, it's a subshell, echo x for x in devs. So we have a device line. <clears throat> and I'll show you those later too, maybe. So it takes the device line and uh, it runs it through sed. So sed strips everything except for the vendor line, which is ven equals da 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 da, to get the vendor. Then we do the same thing for device. Then we do the same thing for subsystem. Then we do the same thing here. This tags thing 
um, all that this tags thing is doing is um, deleting vendor and device to get everything else that isn't vendor or device. What we're doing down here, vendor and device, instead of echo x said to, for each one, we change the format here. So look at this. This is bash syntax. If you have a dollar sign curly brace like this, this is bash syntax for a variety of string operations that bash can perform. Slash pound asterisk ven equals slash ven equals. So what this does is it will strip everything up to the vendor, the ven equals, just like this dot star here in said. It strips everything up to the ven equals and just uh, replaces it with ven equals. So that strips your pretext, your prefix to the vendor, whatever it is. And then the next section of this line, vendor equals vendor, but then slash percent. See, if you look, percent means to do it from the end instead of the beginning. So slash percent colon asterisk slash. What this is doing is the slash percent means scan from the end, not the beginning. It finds the colon, the first instance of a colon, and takes everything between the colon and the asterisk matches everything else, so all the way to end of line, typically here. And then this slash means replace, and then there's nothing after it, so it replaces it with nothing. So what this is doing is the same thing as said here, which is doing, said is grabbing everything there between the colons, right? And it's just dumping, it's, it's stripping the text before and after. We're doing this for both vendor and device, but this is in bash syntax, so bash is doing it for us instead of having to call out to echo, which could be an internal command or not, um, and then pipe it to said, which is always an external command. And remember, because it's subshell syntax, we have to invoke a subshell, which means that the subshell gets executed, the subshell has to set up its own internal operating environment, and then start performing the commands that are sent to the subshell. So this technically can be causing up to three external commands, including a subshell. This can be up to three commands that are being executed here in one line. Same thing for device here, same thing for subsystem here. So what we've done is vendev and subsys have all been replaced with bash syntax matching bash string search and replace that does the equivalent function. Strip the text before and after the vendor or device or subsystem string. Now you'll notice I did not change tags and um, that's I believe because it was a bit of a pain I didn't want to deal with it at the time. Um, this was just, let's see if we can get these changed out and have it make a difference. Now what else changed in this commit? These things up here don't matter. Uh, down here, see, because all these, this everything in this loop, x in devs, this is also in devs. <clears throat> and you'll notice here what I did, um, this really didn't change a lot, but I noticed that there was an optimization that could be done. Um, you notice how this, this class colon sc, and because it grips for sc anyway, and class and sc, which I think is subclass, those are always together. Um, one of the, the way that my database format is set up, class and subclass, they are always paired. They are never not paired. There's never a class with no subclass. So I merged those grips. And uh, then you see here, grep vid pid, because there's never a USB device instance with a vid and no pid. So since those pairs are always found together, I merged them. So that further eliminated two more calls out to grep. Also, because of the fact that grep is matching the pair instead of just the class or just the vendor ID, um, grep is outputting less total lines, which in the case of the first one at least means that this grep for protocol, that the grep for protocol gets less lines to filter to. So it not only eliminates an intermediate extra call to grep, but it also causes less lines to be processed in total by the subsequent call to grep. 
So those optimizations helped out a bit. Not as much as the ones up here. Down here, ACPI, um, Rec 1, I don't remember exactly, but it looks like it's the same deal. ACPI device strings, they usually are just a string of typically eight characters, um, and so they'll just have a dev equals whatever. So basically, Echo X, and you recognize this from up here, it's the same exact thing up here is PCI HD audio. I did not put that it also helped ACPI, but um, it, it probably did. So, same thing. Strip the left and right um, to just get the device ID, and that's it. And by doing that, <clears throat> ACPI devices get the same speed up that these PCI ones get. Um, the USB one See, I could probably change that stuff too, and I think I did in a later commit. And in fact, I might go fishing for that in a little bit. But I wanted to show you this. This made a huge difference. This is a 38% uh, speed drop. So technically, the program runs. That's a little bit faster. That that's um that's almost three fifths the time. Or you could say that it runs 40% quicker. Um, anyway, all I did was change it so that it doesn't call these subshells and it doesn't run said. Instead, it uses, an, it uses an internal bash construct. And I did that in three places here. Um, I also just noticed I cleaned up the subsystem thing the same way I did the USB thing. So um, by ta getting rid of some extra greps, that also helped the time. But the bash ones are going to by far be where the improvement occurred because this was calling two or three commands. It was executing two or three commands every single time multiplied by three different things that do it. And then down here, um, all the greps are doing is that's really only cleaning. Um, actually, for this one, it cleaned out two greps. Um, it looks like, yeah, it looks like cleaned out three total greps got cleaned out. So that avoids running three greps, but each one of these avoids running two to three binaries, so two, four, six. You, you get the idea. And SED is a complicated program. Uh, it does more complicated matching, but that means it's slower. Bash, the string operation here, just uses globbing, just good old standard globbing. So you don't have the complexity, so it scans faster. Plus, it doesn't invoke extra programs. All right, now let's see if I can maybe find the other performance boosts. Yep, now here's where it gets fun. Okay, I fixed up driver drop right, but the thing that I've been trying to improve the performance of more so is this device database builder. Driver drop reads a database of drivers that are on your server. <clears throat> it compares it against the hardware and the computer. It basically builds strings based on a bunch of Linux sysfs stuff. And f it compares the list of things that it found with the list of stuff available in the device database or the driver database. And that's where those improvements from 34 to 21 seconds come down. That's uh, 13 less seconds to drop the drivers onto a computer, which means technicians not standing around as much. But you'll notice I actually have tried to speed up the device database thing. Please ignore the beeps behind me. It, it's very frustrating. Um, the device database thing has been a real thorn in my side for a very long time because I've had it for a very long time, but the performance has been poor. Um, very poor. And I've not been happy with it. So one of the first things I did to speed up build DevDB as you can see here, this format device entry command, <clears throat> what it does, it's a C program I wrote, and it takes information file device sections, and it, it takes the lines and reformats them in C instead of doing it with a bunch of like grep and sed style stuff. Um, that In that case, I wrote a custom tool and if you want, maybe I can actually just show it to you. 87C45C1C. What's going on here is I added a new command. That's a C program. Yeah, feel free to steal it. I don't care. Um, 
and then I changed build dev db, which is the driver drop device database builder. I changed it to use that instead. This process device entries here, <clears throat> this is all the stuff that was being done with subshell, sed, and a lot of different sed search and replaces. Subshell, echo to sed, so that's two of them already. Um, case type, it, it, it. oh look, subshell for y in, uh, subshell echo, cut. So how many programs is this that we're running? One, two, and I'm assuming echo is a built-in. One, two, three, four, and then uh, for y in, so we need a five for the subshell, six, seven, eight programs that we're running there. Cut, translate, said. And then for every single entry, it's going to do this stuff. And so we've got yet another pair of things here with echo, said, and then case Z1. So based on the output of this, it builds a string. So you see this is just a pile of echo, and ultimately they end in said. And this is a loop, so it's, it's running these one time, but then once it's in the loop, these two right here are particularly hot. So to avoid these two subshells, see these subshells are cheap um, to some extent. I mean, they still cost. You see it's in a loop while read X. But the problem is this is an outer loop. This, no, this is an inner loop. This is where things get really ugly. So this inner loop is also inside an outer loop. So this not only runs when the inner loop runs for every entry, but then that inner loop is run for a bunch of other entries that get read. So it becomes a real problem. This is a super hot section of this program. The performance is terrible because all this is doing is taking a line coming in and converting it to a database file entry format. See down here, this is what we ultimately want to end up with. Type, class, sub, this is for USB here. Type, class, it, but it applies to everything. So if you like have a USB um, thing, it's not going to have Ven and Dev and all that. It's going to have just classes, subclasses. If you have a PCI device, it's only going to have, you know, vendor, device, revision, subsystem. And you can see all of those here. And because we unset them prior to the loop, those all are blank if they don't apply to that category of device. So all that, all that, or Cat1. And you know, I feel stupid. I was so happy to have this format device entry thing done, right? That I ended up typing cat1 instead of format device entry and using a left arrow to bring it in from one. Don't use cat to feed a command. Use the left arrow, the left angle bracket to feed a command. Um, because cat invokes potentially a separate command. It may be a built-in, but even if it's a built-in, it's slower to use cat than to just do it straight. The big thing is that this changes it over to format device entry, and then up here is the C program with white space uh, that formats the device entry, and you see I have all the different possible valid tags, um, and I wrote a program in C to do it, and it took a while to write this program, and I had actually thought about writing this program for years um, after writing the initial device database builder. I thought about writing a C program for years that did the work instead, but I realized it's dumb to write a C program to do all the work that's in that script. But what I can do is write a C program that handles any particularly hot areas, any of the critical sections, you know, as they like to say in formal programming class. 17% speed boost from using bash string processing. This is where we improved everything for the better. So build dev db, we already did the format device entry thing where we, most people wouldn't do this. They wouldn't go to the trouble of writing a shell or a C program to replace a shell script chunk, but I did. This is the other side of things. This is where you can easily make a change in your program. 
Remember that coffee? You can easily make a change in your program to improve its performance, your Bash shell script, to improve its performance just by getting rid of some of these stinking greps and seds that get run in a loop. You have DV, which I think is the uh, driver version. There is a version code in the information file for every driver. So this echoes DV and then grep quietly. And this is looking for a single digit date, like uh, one through nine. Uh, but if it's a double digit date, it'll match as well. So this is looking for a date format string and then applying a leading zero if it is a single digit one. Yeah, actually this, because of the caret, it will not match a double digit um, month. This is in American format, by the way, month, day, year. So this is normalizing the date string to be month, day, year, you know, two digit, two digit, four digit. Here is the bash construct that does the exact same thing. Now notice, it. this is a regex style equality check. So it's taking DV, you have to use double brackets, or bash won't do it. Double brackets are required for bash. My understanding is double brackets can also be faster than single brackets, even if you're doing something that would work fine in single brackets. But double brackets, and then DV equals with a tilde, gives you a regex style equality check. Now that's the same thing as grep dash q. That's the exact same thing as this command except this is the bash version of it. Double brackets and this equality here. So this is doing a regex match in bash and then taking action on it. Same thing here. It checks the date value for a single digit day and it normalizes that as well. Um, this is interesting here. I changed the comparison, but I did not change the echo set over here. The reason for that is that the bash um, string search and replace is fairly simple, and it cannot do this thing that said does here where it captures sections of the string and then rearranges them. Um, I mean, you kind of can, but you have to be real clever. It, it, Bash's search and replace functionality is not a regular expression. So I had to leave that in. Maybe um, if you're some brilliant guy in the comments, maybe you can tell me how you would go about doing this right here with Bash syntax. But uh, I didn't feel like trying to figure out a way to do that in Bash syntax. It would speed things up, but... The other stuff I was doing was doing speed ups quicker and more easily. So we removed um, no case match and this pile here and replaced it with all of that. <clears throat> so what is that? What is the that that we're referring to? Well, let's look at the original expression. Check inf not allowed. So what this does is it checks to see if an information file um, is cannot be used by um, it basically if it's in a blacklist of names uh, and that's all there is to that. There are a couple of conditions where an information file should not be considered for inclusion in the device database no matter what. Now the first check here grep IQ so case insensitive quiet OEM set um, so echo to pipe grep IQ or echo to pipe grep IQ. So this does echo grep or echo grep or echo grep. So it's basically checking to see if it's one of these three names. This may not be the best way to do this. <clears throat> and in fact, it isn't if you have bash. And then it has another or condition right there, uh, which tapered off. We don't really care. Um, the bottom line is that there are three names, and then when, when we take this and we collapse it down to bash syntax, double brackets, string, regex, and then the same grep regex, and then it's really the same thing as that other one. You know, just if the file name equals regex equals that, and the dollar sign means end of line, of course, so, um, and also the backslash is, the dots in regex are um, same as a question mark in regular globbing. The backslash 
means that this thing is escaped. It's an actual period, not intended to be a question mark style single character glob. And this is the end of line. So at the end of the line, uh, which keeps it from parsing past the INF, <clears throat> there's three names that aren't allowed. If it's any of these three names, return zero, which means nuh-uh. Um, if, else, if it's not the one of those three names, read information section, which is another program I wrote, that if you feed it an information section name for a Windows in file format, text file, it will find that section and it will dump only that section and basically it strips all the other sections from that file and the output is just the section you're interested in. So this lets you um, read information section um, and it was doing it up here too, version and the section's called version and it looks for here the first instance and then case insensitive quiet signature then then the string dollar sign windows 95 dollar sign which um i think i probably should have modified that there are several signatures there's windows 95 there's chicago um, but i think some of the chicago ones can be used on like xp so i left it alone and what's going on is down here well we really didn't change much of anything now did we it's the exact same thing because the it just wasn't worth it to bother. Um, I could do that. I could probably in the future speed this up, but I'm looking for this, and I'm looking for it case insensitive, and so on and so forth. I wasn't as worried about this. It was more this thing is firing off six greps, and this happens for every file, <clears throat> and uh, and it's it's three greps, two echo, three three echoes, and those are gone. Big performance boost there. Then down here, process information file. It looks like uh, it's another echo grep combo. And there's an echo sed here as well. What did we do? This is your echo grep. So you'll notice it's not quite... Yeah, it, it's, it looks a little different, but it's really basically the same. Double brackets. Regex, you've seen this already. Unset Winver flags here. It was echo and said, and it's just a typical strip of prefixes. So there you go. Dollar sign, curly brace, variable name, forward slash, and I could have put a, a pound sign there, but <clears throat> you know, whatever. It worked the way it was. I didn't care. Clean out bug fix and performance improvements. Performance improvements. Okay, let's see here. What did we do here? Um, right here, it turned out we did not need... it. The date was always at the beginning of a line, so I changed it from a regex match to a standard match, which is faster because it doesn't invoke any regex anything. It's just a straight equality with globbing. But it has to be in double brackets to use that. Um, then up here, you can see we had a subshell translate, grep, said. So you see I optimized by tossing TR, but then I immediately realized I could do this. While read DV, do if DV equals, has driver ver anywhere in it, break. Which means that it reads TFPI2 until it finds a line that has driver ver anywhere in it. Now, a thing I should tell you is that, um, this this stuff has already been translated to lowercase in an earlier part of the program. I normalized everything to lowercase. So you can kind of ignore the fact that this is potentially a case sensitivity problem. Um, it, it finds driver ver and it breaks, which is the same thing as grep-m1 driver ver. And then, so it's doing it all in bash. It's reading it in bash. It's comparing it in bash. It never invokes grep. So we end up with a DV that is equivalent to this. So then what do we do? Well, there's three bash string search and replaces. We have uh, DV here. This is a string search and replace. And notice that there's two slashes here. So what's going on is slash slash means find all instances and search and replace. Instead of just find the first one, search and replace. It, slash slash basically means be greedy. Do as many as you can. 
So it finds all spaces and deletes them, which is suspiciously similar to tr-d space. So this effectively is doing what tr is doing. Then dv equals uh, dv slash star equals slash. So everything up to the equal sign, up to and including the equal sign. And it nukes that. Because the way that this works is it goes driver ver equals, and then you have a driver version. And then dv... Uh, dv slash comma asterisk. So what happens is driver ver equals blah, 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 comma, and it has section names after it. So this gets just the version date, the date here, right? It grabs it, and it nukes everything prior to the equal, everything after the comma. So this is just stripping like the set is doing here. Um, so we've replaced... TR and two SEDs with three bash string search and replace operations. And down here, we replaced bash regex matches with bash standard glob equality. The double equals invokes that glob equality capability. If you use a single equal, um, it will not do the globbing. But yeah, and the said thing here is still there, but the point is we used a, a faster equality check twice. We were able to eliminate um, grep, looking for a line, a single line, using a read loop, and a compare and a break. We were able to clean out TR and said using these. So, And then down here, there's another thing down here. Oh, and look, it doesn't have a thingy in front of it. So remember, we already did this before. If it's these three things, return zero, else read information section. So I collapsed the return zero and the if and all that into three comparisons um, because they're ORed together. If any one of these comparisons passes, it runs return zero. So I eliminated this if then fi construct and made it, frankly, easier to read because there's no need for the conditional branch here. Um, because all it's going to do is return zero, and the else not needed either. So there's the the equal tilde the regex match. I only use it in one other place, and that's TT Cleaner. And this is in the rewriting section. Um, if the name in the array is a match for any characters up to whatever the rewrite string is, and then any more characters, then it does whatever. And that's that's really, really straightforward. And now that I'm looking at it, to be completely frank, it perhaps could even be replaced with um, an equals equals. But I think I packed, um, in that section, I actually pack asterisks in and have them pulled out. So yeah, that probably wouldn't work. All right, I am I am officially out of time. I have to go. Um, I hope that this has been informative. You can see the sh the subshells thing. I don't have time to go through all this and to you know revert the script and show you the old way versus the new way. This file, generate archive batch file, I run it under mingw and it uses the same thing. And I can show this one to you because this one is not really a big deal here. So uh, we have, you can see that I use three of the bash search and replace style things. That Actually, this isn't a search and replace. This is grab the variable line, position zero, and one character. All that really does is is see if the line starts with that sign, um, but I was doing it differently before. And then name equals line slash equals HTTP, and then URL equals line slash, you get the idea. Now here's the old versions here that are running two processes. You've got test echo line, see subshell, echo said, uh, with a search and replace here equals, yeah. Um, that could have been done better, I think, but, and it was up here, name, subshell, echo, said, again, and it sped it up. So, just as a final example, let's, let's just do this in real time. So, let's revert these changes. Let's take them out, right? Oops. I gotta stop doing that. All right. 
So let's roll this back to the old version, okay? Now, let's time. Let, let, first of all, um, we need to cache everything, I think, for it to be a fair test of the algorithm. Let's cache up the data first just by running the current one. And you can already see it's quite fast, right? All right. Now, now that everything is definitely cached up, let's do time bad here, right? These are a bunch of YouTube channels that I archive. So what this is doing is generating a batch file that'll run YouTube DL to download all the newest videos from any given one of these channels. Um, several of them are political channels from multiple sides of the aisle. Um, you, you probably wonder why there's uh, Valsh and say Mr. Obvious in the same list and there's a reason for that. It's because I want to hear a bunch of stuff. But mainly I'm just archiving a bunch of channels for a variety of reasons that you don't need to care about. So we saw that that took 22 seconds, 22.8 seconds, and I guarantee if we ran it again it would take about the same time. Now let's do it with the bash stuff instead of the grep set. And, and remember on Windows the fork cost is massively higher than on Linux or Mac OS. So it's going to run a lot slower on Windows than on Linux. Now, I can't run this script on Linux because I have some issues with the carriage return line feed stuff that I have to work out. But the fork cost is more expensive on Windows, so if you're running a shell script under Bash on Windows, this benefits you more. How much more? Let's go from 22.8 seconds, and you've already seen this, but let's do it one more time for fun, to 3.2 seconds. And we, we can call that 3.3. Let's see. So what's that? Uh, 22.8, 3.3, .3, uh, 22.8. Yeah, same thing. I was right. So that's 14.4%. The correct number is 14.4%. All right. I think I need to stop. I hope this has been educational. Y'all have a wonderful day, night, whatever it is. Take care. Avoid subshells. Be wonderful programmers and be excellent to each other. Have a good one.